Hello everyone, my name is Olamide. And I am Oyinda Mola. And you are listening to Ola and Oyin Podcast, where we discuss and engage on topics and issues that concerns us as human beings, especially stories of growth and learning for young people like us and for even older folks. Hello there, beautiful people. It's another episode of the Ola and Oyin Podcast. My name is Ola Midesh, and Oni is here with me. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> As always. That. Mm-hmm. So today is episode 10, like 10 episode. Like, Yay! <laughs> really we're supposed 10. to have, exactly, you're supposed to have a bell or something. Ah! Eh, uh, don't worry. When we get to under. <laughs> Why don't you ring, ring a massive bell? Celebrate your small wins. Ring the bell mm-hmm. now. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways. Have you been on my hand? I've been good. I've been okay. I've been sleeping a lot these days. Not like sleeping at night. Sleeping in the afternoon. I don't know. <laughs> when you have you been? Okay. This time around. I know. You know what? I know I'll be. <laughs> I'm know I'm been stressed. Gosh, I'm, I'm yeah. been stressed. The leg? The leg? I'm tired. I come back every time tired. Like, throughout this yeah. week, uh, is it the last week? I was, I was just weak. Like each time I come back home, it's like nobody. Like, I don't even know. Maybe I, I don't even know. I'm able to do something as tedious as that. But I just don't know. My body just feels so weak. Definitely. But I probably just need to rest more. And even today that I was supposed to rest. But it's all good. <laughs> We're going to find that time. Remember, prioritizing health. I have to find mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. I have to find the time. That, that's why I feel like I need a break. Like from work, I need a break from yeah, my. Yeah, I think you should actually have a plan for a leave or something. Just yeah, get out. I mean, to chill out, sleep more, do less. Not like I'll be doing nothing, but do less. Mm. And then get refreshed for the second half. I mean, for the, the second quarter. Yeah, second quarter. By the way, Ramadan carrying to all uh, Muslim listeners. Muslim general all over the world to get to listen to this. Wish you a very good um prayer month. Yes. And I pray that the, what you pray for will be answered. Yes, the blessings of the holy month will be with you and yours. Yes. Yeah. Don't forget to put Nigeria, this country in your prayers. Don't worry, I know we are all angry, but just try, please. Put it in your mm-hmm. prayers. <laughs> Anyway, some people will agree. And yes. be kind. Is it prayer we need? But I feel we need prayer. Too. No, we don't. Not just prayer. Prayer and work, but we need a prayer. prayer. Yeah, since this month is dedicated to praying, so it's not bad. The other 11 months. Not work. just praying, but relationship with God, too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, guys. That's, that's about that, about how we are doing, we are feeling, and as you have seen in the thumbnail, we are going to be having a book discussion today, and uh, it's a very nice book, a book I, I, I like so much, by Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yo, I, I hope this is not going to be censored by somebody. It <laughs> actually does not mean that, yeah. And as we go on, <laughs> you'll come to realize that it's not as it's not. Yeah, as... that that is the if you if you get to uh, see the cover page, the subtitle read the a counterintuitive approach to living a good life. It's actually a catchy headline, a catchy title, and it did work. It did work. Got the attention. When you hold your first impression. 
First impression. Oh, okay. Let me see. I I would say it was the first book I ever read. But when I started this journey of starting to read more, because I'm a lazy reader, it was like the first book that was introduced to me and by your very own Ola of the Ola Anonymous Podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so when I saw the book, you know, someone that does not really like to read and okay, I'm trying not to care, right? This must be it. A subtle art of not giving a fuck. And I just interpreted it as a easy way of not caring about anything in this world. Literally. Like that was just my own interpretation. I didn't even care about reading the a counterintuitive approach. I didn't even read up that one. And even if I had done that at that point in time, I don't think I would have thought deeply about it. So I was so interested in reading the book. And a part of me also thought, Oh, isn't this going to be just that book where you read and a lot of you know those even vulgar terms and the the author will just be going all and all and i'm like okay let me just find out it was like it was fascinating i wanted to read it yeah, but, it's just a hi guys it's just a if you are like me or if you were like me rather because i'm normal like that imagine i i give a fuck about you that's why i am asking are you fair i know you think i don't but i actually do okay so um if you were like me yeah the author has a, a name for people that don't want to give a fuck about anything so you will find out soon <laughs> so advice okay you really have to give so, a fuck you know what re- re- remind me when i want to write my book okay this kind of catchy uh i should remind you when you want to write your book yeah i'm yeah. telling me to remind you to write a book because i don't know you want to write a book but yeah, telling me okay. to remind you when you try to. Okay. Yeah. Now I have you to do this to remind you about. I'm going to write a book. <laughs> okay, I'm going to remind you that you have to write a book and also. No, no, not to remind me to write a book. But you, but you might Just forget. Because this is the first time I'm hearing it. Okay, remind me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. So guys, there's a lot to unpack in this book. You, Definitely. You read it, and or probably you the room or had a chance to go through it. You know that it's loaded. I think they should. I think some people should have read it at least in our last book yeah. discussion where we discussed alchemy. So we intend that we're going to be discussing social out of not yeah, giving a yeah, fuck in the yeah, yeah. next and, book and discussion. So book I part. hope people at least get a copy for themselves or just. Download yeah. or and something. if you have not, just is walking to a bookstore. I like to preach hard copy. Yes, I. I <laughs> it's get it's advisable. Book. I don't know. It feels yeah. easier to read and closer to. But but the reading reader. a book is easy now. There are audio platforms. Even that like audio, I don't know. I still don't it's follow. I don't follow audio. Personalize it, yeah. Personalize it. That's what art program gives you. Art yeah. Art Someone says art. it gives you the feel of smell, touch, and yeah, sight. Yeah, smell. The so look, the sight, the touch. The yeah. Okay, you can smell your device. You can touch your device. <laughs> you can. Yeah, there's, there's actually. I get it. It's the past smell. I get. I get that. I get that. So guys, yeah. let's dive right into it. Okay. Like it's a, it's a book discussion, so we are going to be once in a while reading up from the book, and then talking about the author's idea, ideology, what he's trying to pass across. Basically, if we agree, if we don't, this is not really to review, yeah. more like to discuss. You understand? So, but. Majority of the part of the book, I think I do agree with that counterintuitive approach thing. It doesn't go anywhere. And so, guys, point. Okay. So, it started off with a story. It, it, this is not a story, but it started off with a story of um, there were a, lot of a examples guy. In the book to explain. Yeah, so I particularly like. That in the chapter one of the book, he didn't waste any time to just say, What's the point of this? Like, 
you said that there is a name you give for people who yes who don't want to give a fuck about anything who don't, don't, give, don't want to give a fuck about it. anything and anything I, in emphasis like capital letter capital what they call it block letters yeah, anything like, in block like a n y t h i n g in block letters if you that, don't want to there's a word mm-hmm. Allah yeah, and yeah, according to according to Mark Mark, like if you don't, if you are not giving a fuck at all yes. for everything, then you have no emotion. And people who have no emotion are just plain psychopaths. So, from the first fourteenth fourteenth page of the book, you already know. Why would anybody even try to <laughs> not have any emotions? Now thinking about it, that was what was I thinking no, when I wanted to read the book? Say, you know that not to have emotions. I don't give a fuck. I don't, you know, people like to say things like that. And before you know, it becomes who they have. They want to leave it because they say. Yes, 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 that's true. So, so they, deep down, they might have emotions, but I don't know, because they have convinced themselves not well, to have. I feel like. So, yeah, what, what do you want to say? No, even if you are trying to say you don't have any emotions, I feel like it's the emotion that got you to the part where you don't want to have any emotion. I don't. <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, complicated. Very so, complicated. But basically, Mark Manzi says you are a psychopath. That means you have to give a fuck. You understand? And he goes out, like he went on to explain the title yes. of the book. Yes. So, what is? So, how do you? Not want to give, not give a fuck, and then give a fuck at the same time. So he try, he try to explain in three uh, subtlety. I, I don't know if I pronounce that word. So he gave the explanation. Number one, he said, not giving a fuck does not mean being indifferent. It means being comfortable with being different. Okay. We get that. Yeah. Yeah. So what does indifference mean? Like, like you don't care. Doesn't mean you don't care. And that's what most like anybody that picks up that book in the first like on the first glance, first impression, you just feel like this book is about you not caring. And yeah. And then bam, you are on the fourteenth page and that's not it. You, you should care. <laughs> that's not it at all. So mm-hmm. It's, it's not really about not caring at all. Admirable about not caring at all. Yes. That, that that's what he's trying to say. So it it, it boils it boils down to the big question: What do you give a fuck about? Finding something to give a fuck about. Like what are you choosing to give a fuck about? You understand? Mhm, mhm, mhm. And, uh, and, that's, and how, that's what gives me how can, to. How can you not give a fuck? I'm saying the word for too much. Extra, Maybe you should just like, care. Just use the word care before. <laughs> no, 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 no. Before you before get to this like, podcast, I'm going to go with that. You said use the word care, 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 care. I, okay, I should use the word care. Yes, be so, let's be gentle. Are you are not going to care about what ultimately does not matter? Mm, that's you get the point. Prioritizing, so, just like you're prioritizing yeah, health. Yeah, there are things in your yeah, life you prioritize. Prioritizing what you give, what you care about. <laughs> I, I don't know what you <laughs> <laughs> What you give and have for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so another one, it says, do not give a fuck about adversity because you can't escape adversity. Then he says, you must give a fuck about something more important than adversity. Mm-hmm. You understand? If you don't want to give if you don't want to care about life, um, that's what adversity and all the thing wrapped up in going, living as a person, be you know, seemingly hard part of it. Yes, <laughs> like yes, yeah. bad thing what happens to good open. people. You get so anything yeah. can go wrong in your life for you yeah. not to bother about they those things. You have to have something greater than exactly that you particular to, thing. Exactly. So, what is that thing? You you have to choose that thing that is very more important to you 
it yeah. could be family, you know, it could be relationship that you deeply care about, mm-hmm. you know, that will not, you know. And then the so- third subject today was like, that whether you realize this explanation is causing problems. So whether you realize it or not, you are always choosing what to give a fuck about. Yes, yes, yes. So I think, I think that's true. You, you, you begin to see the counterintuitive part, like when you say you don't want to give a fuck. But now, you say, whether you realize it or not, in fact, like, like you said, it was even a fuck that led you to the point that you decided that you are not. I know, exactly, it. exactly. <laughs> like, I feel like that, that, that too much point. emotions. Got you to the part mm-hmm. of I'm 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 stressed I'm out. I'm tired of this. Yeah, so, yeah. I know. so in order to not get to that point of being tired of everything, where you become a psychopath, better yeah, know how to handle it and control it. So that's what the author is trying to say. So, so in essence, I don't even know who gives the summary of the book in the first chapter. Like he says, this whole book. So what's the point of this book anyway? Then he goes. The idea is of not giving it for is a simple way of reorienting our expectation for mm-hmm, life mm-hmm. and choosing what is important and what is not. But that's true though, Ola. Mm. Let's yeah. let's think about it. Some people let's not generalize now that most okay. people will say they don't give a fuck is actually not giving a fuck. But maybe they are already trying to be like trying to bring down their emotion and um, their expectations rather. So maybe mm. something's about to happen like I don't care. It's not mm. about them not actually caring, but they are trying to you know not raise their expectations, that kind of thing. You don't want to raise their hope too high. So they just want it to happen and be like, Oh, good. Sometimes that's what people do. But other times mm. people genuinely don't want to care about, about and, and for that people that do give way too many forms. Mm, that one. Mm. No, it's those kind of people that get to the point where they actually don't want to give. You don't get. Like, yeah. it disturbs the mental health. Yeah, this is a whole lot about mental health, really. It's so, it's so, it's so deep, kind of. So, so, the idea is reorienting yes, our expectations. Be comfortable being different. Mm have something greater than the bad things that happen to you yeah, so that you focus yeah, more on that so in in essence in essence i would say thing. i would say gratitude is is a way to the second explanation of adversity and yeah, something more yeah. that i feel like gratitude yeah. is a way exactly. to get over that thing sometimes we focus on what we what we are yet to get and we don't even yeah, yeah, we're not yeah, grateful yeah. for what we already have and yeah. in a and way you, you, you get you know, I was listening to uh, really Sam Adeyemi's um, podcast or something like that sometimes ago and it said a story about he was talking about gratitude and he mentioned a story about how a, 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 if a guy met his friend, an old friend so they met and the old friend was like, ah, why are you looking like this? Like the other one was looking sad, devastated and he was like, oh, da some days back or some weeks back a family member of his died and then that he doesn't even know the family member but he got um they willed a particular amount of money to him and i was like oh wow sorry but you got money and i was like okay that that's not even all low that's okay let's say that happened like two weeks back then maybe in some day okay two weeks back last week another person died and willed a particular sum of money to this same person. Ah, yeah, you're already boiling the money. So why are you looking sad? Is it that you don't like money? He said, no, that's not the problem. But this week, nobody have died. And nobody has read that. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the kind of mindset? So yeah, because nobody died this week and we would mm-hmm. earn money to you. You have forgotten to be grateful for what I opened it. In. You get. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we, we, we focus so much on what we are, we want to get that we yeah. don't even remember so in that yeah. way you yeah. would focus yeah. more on the bad yeah. things you get you focus more on what is not happening yet or what is going wrong when you're supposed to be f- 
focusing on what is going right. That's why even when it comes to social media and the way celebrities and do or people that and do social media truths and all of those things, sometimes in the comment of about 400, there might be just two people that, is, that are trolling you. But you focus more on those trolls than mi- millions of possible. you get. There are millions of people that are telling you awesome, fantastic, beautiful, but mm. you want to care about people that say disgusting and just two people or just mm. few people. So sometimes focusing more on, even if it is 300 comment and 290 people are bashing you and just one person tells you good thing, I think you should focus more on that one person. That's you know, a way you know, to... Interestingly, yeah. you say something about feedback and mm, okay. in, this, in this book. So, imagine, let's imagine you are a celebrity, like you said, but just a random person and you, and you, you feel that people are attacking you, maybe somebody confronts you and they say something you don't like, and you start caring about that, which is very not so important, you start, you know, giving a fuck in the world about that. And then yes. the feedback loop works in such a way that after a time you start getting angry for getting angry. You yes, yes, that's but that's the thing. thing. Because you care so not. much about a part it might never be anger sometimes. It might just be a particular thing. You know, sometimes it's even I don't even know. It just goes on to a particular thing a particular thing happened to you 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 care about that particular thing you are worried why you care about that thing and you are still worried about why you worry about why you care come on it's 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 stressing you up definitely it's going to stress you up and we we all go through that phase i I cannot even lie i go through that phase sometimes where i do a particular thing and then i'm worried about that particular thing and then i'm worried about why i'm worried about that particular thing and you know it just you just can't you know, just stop at one <laughs> in the closing chapter of this book uh for chapter in the closing yeah it says this book will not teach you how to gain or achieve but rather how to lose and let go it will teach mm. you how to take inventory of your life mm. and crop out all for the most important items yeah know? Mm-hmm. If you teach you how to close your eyes and trust that you can fall back and see it okay. Mm-hmm. If you teach you to give fewer pucks, you yeah, again with the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, let's yes, give it to him. He actually used that word like. Yeah. He, he, he really know, didn't he care about. That. He didn't give about. He, he didn't give a <laughs> no, fuck about think, using the word fuck. So it was. Yeah, I think when you when you had he had a he had a terminology no for it. it. Forkwardy, yeah. forkwardy. There was this forkwardy. So forkwardy. if you care about something, <laughs> that thing is forkwardy. <laughs> no, Bakwasi is such an amazing writer. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. I like it. I, so, I feel like I, I didn't really read about the author, and that's a little not good. But if I'm to guess, I would probably guess the guy is a psychologist or a philosopher or something like that. Maybe he studied philosophy or psychology. He just has this way with writing. And it's okay. nice. So, so, pretty much in the first, in the first chapter, he already told us what he said. Um, yes. The bottom line. Then he goes trying to say happiness is a problem. Okay. I think if, uh, uh, what, what I can say discuss on that is that it, because he said happiness comes from solving problems. Mm. Say you have a problem, mm. you are troubled, but you need to get to that happy state, and then you solve the problem mm-hmm. instead of maybe pointing fingers or ranting or doing nothing then blame you or whatever what have you solving mm. a problem because it's life adversity we always get yeah but well, yes stand. that's it yes. yeah so, i also think solving your problem is where the happiness, happiness comes from but i also yeah. think that the statements where you play okay the place where you said happiness is a problem i feel like yeah. the reason why 
I know it, it kind of looks so like it looks somehow. Why would happiness yeah. be a problem? And he went on to also say it's also a solution. Like it also comes from a place of you solving a problem. Okay, so yeah, yeah. happiness being a problem means that we all sh- like I think majority of people. Um, yeah. like someone like me, and I feel like people should strive to be happy. Like, so a lot of us would say we want to be happy in life. So that's mm-hmm. like a problem. Like we're trying to yeah. get to an happy, happy place. And then Everybody this happiness happy. Do, does not just come from. Yeah, it has to come from you doing a particular thing, you solving exactly. a particular solution. You so happiness in itself, it's a problem about. because we are striving to get happy, to be happy. Money is a problem mm-hmm. because we all want to make money. We are trying to make money, <laughs> but then it also comes from doing something so we have to mm, work for yeah, it we have to that, do a particular exactly so something that. like that so when you when you do a particular thing you are happy and then he went on to explain um there's this part where he explained values and how and i feel like your values too can determine the kind of happiness you get whether lasting or short term kind of so Yes, let, 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 let me speak a bit about what you said there. Okay. He, he was trying to he was trying to define good and bad values. Okay. And I think I like his um explanation, you know. It, it, it went like good values are number one, reality based. Okay. Number two, socially constructive. All right. Then number three immediate and controllable. Mm-hmm. We are on the other hand, bad values are superstitious, Sucious. number one. Number two, socially, socially destructive. destructive. And number three, mm, not, uh, immediate. not controllable, not yes. immediate or controllable. So if you give an example, say honesty. Honesty is a good value because it's something you have, you have complete control over, you know. Mm-hmm. It can mean whether to be honest or not honest. It's yes, your now, it's your choice. You make the choice. Yes. It, and it, it, it reflects reality mm-hmm. and it benefits others. Yes, it's socially constructive. Even, if you are even, honest, even things... Uh, people might not like, you know, but... Yeah, what's, so the, honesty, the, what's the... What's the... What's the... What's the... Um, what's the... This thing? Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. yeah. So I it's don't know, a good you can't word. Take, you can't take anything away from it. So the same way, yeah, kindness to kindness is also a good um, yeah. a good value. There's this post where um, talking about men who um, or people who involve who engage in domestic violence and all of that. Someone yeah. said something that in anything you do, marry someone who is kind or be with someone who is kind yeah, or even I have a relationship with someone who is kind. Because if anything changes, I'm not saying that a kind person can suddenly not become unkind, but at least the the um the possibility of that happening is going to be very rare. If the person is kind, like no matter how you know that there are values to this thing yeah. so you get okay but the other part yes is innate or inherent in that person but yeah the yeah. part where he mentioned the bad values where he went yeah, on he to say popularity yeah, like popularity on the other hand you can you can part. you can tell that it's it's going to stress you out because you have to yeah. give a fuck about a lot of a lot of yeah, yeah. To be popular. Yeah, I like to read this part. It says, if that's your value, say popularity, mm-hmm. and if your metric is being the most popular guy or girl at the dance party, much of what happens will be out of your control. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, and you don't even know who else will be at the event, and you probably won't know who, I mean, who cares, you understand? Sure, sure. Yeah, you know. The value is a metric or metric isn't based on reality. And then you'll be you bothered. You would want... When, in fact, you have no fucking clue what anybody else really thinks Think about, about you. So, I think if you are using this reality-based, social, constructive, uh, then control. controllable, if you are using it to judge values, now, I think we can easily make... Uh, we can easily make uh, conclusions. Is this value good? Or oh, is this value good? Otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
Yeah, we have a lot of examples of good values, bad values, you know. And, you know, that, that's what you get from the book, from that part. And I like to talk about this part where you were saying you are not special. Did, did yeah, you read that? Part? Yeah, yeah, that's. You were trying to say that, that, that professionalism is, is a mm. tyrant. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel like I felt a little attacked. Not because I feel special, but because sometimes I just feel. You know, some you know the thing about special is it's not the word special that matters. It's not that you say I feel I'm special. The thing mm-hmm. is, you you we say it's a different one. word. We say mm-hmm. something like I'm unique, I'm rare, yeah. I'm weird. All those mm-hmm. words are terminology for you being different, special. Mm-hmm. So you want to stand out, which is not yeah. a bad thing, though. But mm-hmm. then you start feeling this sense of entitlement, and that's what yeah. the author went on to explain. Yeah. yeah, and and when you when you are feeling so much inside you, you give way too many. Talk too many, about too things. many. Yeah. Like, and oh gosh, everybody is going through this life, whether good or rough. You know, we all have our yeah. time when things are good. And, mm-hmm. You know, so it, it, maybe you are at the point where the road the, the road is rough, really rough, and you're feeling and you want to keep yourself in that moment, and you want to just take it step back and say, see guys, it's enough for me because mm. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm less privileged because I'm this and then you sit there and then tend yourself to be the special person, you know, and then when somebody says, oh, come on, get up there and you're like, can't you see I'm special? Can't yes. you see I'm, my case and- is different? Can't you? As much as the author, the author dwelled on the entitlement part of, because he said he told a story about Jimmy, Jimmy, where I called Jimmy is you, but sorry, Jimmy, (laughs) Jimmy. I I feel like Jimmy, Jimmy something, Mm -hmm. but it's Jimmy. He told a story about Jimmy. Double M Y. Yeah, double M Y. Jimmy. (laughs) I come on, stop. No, okay, that's that funny. All right. Yeah. So he told the story about him. I think he was a successful, um, maybe bank, ma- bank something. It was in the corporate world and all of those things. Okay. And it just feels like he has to be rich because he's, he's him, is Jimmy, and I, I deserve this. So when you feel you're special, you probably feel they have to pick me for the interview because it's me now. You know how mm-hmm. people who have probably money feel like you have to bow for me. It's me. Mm-hmm. You have to do this. It's me. You know. Mm-hmm. You know who I am. And then uh, that do you know who I am? Kind of traits. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. You know those kind of things. So and it becomes a problem. Yes. When somebody I, doesn't. Exactly. So I feel like in a way, if you are thinking you are weird, you are special, you are important, you are. Yeah, yeah, you have the then you have this inner yes there will be this you know we are bothered about external pressure but you see the internal mm. pressure you give yourself by feeling mm. like you are weird you are yeah, this yeah, yeah. is you're much to you, exactly so you you in your mind because you feel you are, you are this particular way you expect people to treat you a particular way and if they mm. do not treat you that way <laughs> You, you, you know you know how you feel you get you, and then you get. There, there can now be that feedback loop of from hell rather where you now feel like why am i feeling bad for feeling bad yes it's their loss then you start battling okay. in your maybe head they, you know i was just thinking maybe there's a feedback loop from everyone <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe i feel like the feedback maybe loop from everyone is actually get is, this do positive things yes maybe. Charity or something. Mm-hmm. Live from heaven. Come on. Okay. Mm. Give me an answer. Why you write your book? Please write about it. <laughs> and that, the that, that okay, the author mentioned now that you wrote, said something about positivity. The yeah. author also went on to explain positive experiences and negative experiences, and how we are, um, how humans or which we we care more about positive values and i cannot say that it is untrue for especially from this mm. like this part of the world where we mm. believe so much in positivity if you are sick mm. or feeling unwell you get to tell people that 
uh, why is the person not at work? Ah, is, is, um, she's strong. He's strong. Oh, he's strong. Why not come to work? So we try to always stay positive irrespective of the situation. Mm. As much yeah. as that's not a bad thing though, but excessive doing of it would cause you not to evaluate yourself. Because really, yeah, some yeah. negative things can be going on, and you yeah, just yeah. saying the positive things will not take it away. So you have to it's evaluate kind of like it exactly, which is the issue. so. He, he explained that sometimes it is you. There's can you can you reach that part where he explained the positivity? There was something he said about positivity. It was okay that it's parodically. Yeah, the terminology. If you read the book, I cannot say the particular. I I get, I get, I get, um, I get that he mentioned this, but I, I, I don't think to connect with that one again or find the part. Well, basically, it's, it's not bad to sometimes accept the negative things that happen in your life. You know, you know, let me, let me. As much as you are staying positive. Why, why I agree is because. People, people will always tell you that you grow from failure, you grow from your past experiences, mm-hmm. you, know, you learn from it and you become better. Mm-hmm. So when you get to seeing all those uh, bad times, rough parts in your life, yeah. you, what, instead of taking the lessons from it, you know, you are setting yourself up for, I don't know, Maybe more failure. Greater failure. Do you understand? So it, it was like, in the, in the part, you said you fail forward. Mm-hmm. In the part of the book. Failure is the way forward, yes. Yeah, so failure is the way forward. He kind of, he kind of have it. He's a good writer, though. He has this way of putting headlines. Two opposite things together. together. Yes. Like, like, what did they wow. call that thing? What figure of speech is that where you put... Come on, don't let me even crash ourselves now. Our uh, English language is. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a word for it. I cannot remember which it is. It's definitely not irony. I don't know. There is this word it's that paradox. is. Pe- yeah, is par- okay, yes. I think it's para. Is it paradox? I think it's a figure of speech. It's, it's a figure of speech where you put, mm-hmm. where there's something like sweet, bitter, bitter, sweet. Where you put the positive and the negative or the. One and yeah. the opposite together so in like, a particular thing. Basically, like pain is part of the process. That's mm-hmm, what we mm-hmm. uh, um, pain. pain is part of the process. Yeah, uh, uh, of the process. Do you know that no, I already have a title for your book? Pain is the process. You don't want. To said it in the book. I know, I know. That's what I'm saying that you yeah. you have to you have to write a book of pain is the process, and in that part you and a subtitle in the book will be feedback loop from ah oh, come on. We are already oh, writing this book, Jeff. Hey, <laughs> come on, you my co-author. Come on, please. <laughs> okay, so let's yeah, so let's move I, on I like so that this episode will not be too too. long. Yeah, I like this one. It says you are wrong about everything. Yeah, so am I. Like everybody is wrong about everything. So wait, do Ola? Let's let's get this right. When the guy said I, you are wrong about everything, you are wrong about everything. So am I. I feel like at mm-hmm. that point you should just drop that book. You what do you book. think? We went on because chapter six and you still wrote the chapter nine, like. But really, <laughs> really, it's just like it's it. just a story of growth, like growth yes. and being open-minded. It's just I basically I, I, that. I, I particularly like that part, and I think I underlined a few things there. Mm, okay. It was like we are always in the process of approaching truth and perfection. Mm-hmm. Without actually reaching truth or perfection, hmm. he started off by saying growth is an endless iterative process. Mm-hmm. When we learn something new, we don't go from wrong to right in, in absolute. Like, why did you not tell me this in school? Because <laughs> I, I just to... felt like when That's I like go from win. something, no, when I was when I was young it's not like i'm old but when i was in my like high school when i was in high school actually secondary school i'm only using high school because we don't know who is listening it's actually secondary school that it is called in my whole part of the world so when i was in high school 
yeah. I just believe that when you learn something and it is opposite of what you already know before and it is in the mm-hmm. more positive it still seems towards the more positive mm-hmm. side it actually yeah. becomes right that's right, what i yeah. believed then gradually i started seeing the phrase of you learn unlearn relearn and i was like okay mm-hmm. so for the longest time i was so stuck in this place where i didn't want to when i say something i don't want to take it back i i was not mm-hmm. so um I don't, I don't, um, what's the word now? Change. I'm not used to change. I don't, mm, call, I don't, mm-hmm. not I'm not flexible with it. I, I just want to say something and stick to it till you yeah, get, man of and word, that right? kind of thing does not even help you to grow. And a lot of people will just say, ah, she's, um, she's conservative. They have words for these things that make you feel like, ah, she's conserved, she's reserved, she's, hello, mm. hello, I'm disclaimer. <laughs> Yeah, I am. I am not those things. You people should calm down. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. So, what were you saying? Sorry. So she was trying to say good in the process, and I think like this, like one of the backdrop of this, um, this, um, what do I call it now? This podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. we oh. want to know why we do in life. You, you understand? So it was like when you learn something, you don't just go from wrong to right. The rather we go from wrong to slightly less wrong. And then and then when we learn something additional, we go from slightly less wrong to slightly less wrong than that. And then to even less wrong than that, and so on and so forth. So like Growth is a process. We are always constantly trying to approach the truth and perfection. Mm-hmm. There is no really no correct dogma or perfect ideology. No, you know? we've seen that There's play only... out very well in in is our it? world. I said we've seen these things play out in our world these days. Like things that we believe were right a few decades or few years back. Yeah, we come to realize that oh, what were we thinking? There is, there is really no correct dogma or perfect ideology. Mm-hmm. There, is, there is only what your experience has shown you to be right for you. Mm-hmm. That you part, that's true. You know, so that, that's what you really believe. So you have to continually open your mind mm-hmm. for that growth process. You know, yeah. to learn what other people have been experiencing, what is your ideology. Yeah, ideology for them. You understand? Yes, yes. Then you can begin to even question your own ideology. Then you move from. Then sometimes you can see that okay, you say wrong, and you go to less wrong. I don't want to say right, <laughs> like you said. Exactly. So, so that's so why that, I also so that's think part okay, of continue. everybody is wrong about everything. You yes, know? yes. Mm-hmm. So, and then I like this part in less. Time ran the whole book up now. Okay. He, he, he left it at a very uh, emotional um, and very deep uh, ending. He was talking about death. Mm. How death, the thought of death makes you, makes one live his life to the fullest. You understand? Or, Live his life, not maybe not to be for it. Just see what I say about this man putting positive and I don't know. I'm not saying I don't know. Just have a way of putting word and opposite together. Yeah. Life and death together, really. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So the sunny side of it. Mm. So death has a sunny side. Mm. You mm. find that in the book, really. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so wait. I know that all you're trying to do suspense or what. Okay, okay, that's great. No, he actually told the story of, I like this particular part in that in this chapter okay. of, his, of his friend who died, and then because he had a deep connection with the friend. So one day he was mourning the friend. He was saying mourning, or uh, was just in deep thought in his jacuzzi, and he was in a dream. Okay. In jacuzzi, and he had a dream that he and the guy were in a jacuzzi. Very weird uh, dream like that, and he was telling the guy that I'm sorry you died. Hmm. You know, telling your friend I'm sorry you died. You know, 
this guy was the guy, the dead guy. He still in that dream. He was not like, why are you worried about? Why are you sorry about me dying mm-hmm. when you are not even living? Mm-hmm. 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 So he, he, that was like a turnaround for him to and he started seeing things from that perspective. Like, and that's why people yes, say. I like people say this, um, life is short when people die, when they lose someone. Or mm-hmm. when they know someone who died and they're like, life is short. The life is short is not that they will die tomorrow, but it's a yeah. reminder that whatever is what's doing, is what's doing now. Exactly. Because yeah. I can close my eyes <laughs> now and close and not open it tomorrow. But you know one thing that gets to me is I've been there and I would say maybe I give too many fuck. Yeah. But I, I get to the point where I am like, oh, life is actually short. You have to, you have to do what you have to do now. And then I'm thinking, if I go, is it? Am I trying to, like, what happens if I try to plan and do the thing now, and I still go now? What will happen? Will happen? See, the truth is, just leave. Don't yeah, yeah. and set realistic targets. Don't even yeah. try to overdo or underdo. Just do you leave. What is exactly. You know, I, what is I was reading a WhatsApp status and somebody was like, you know, when if you don't if you don't take care of the relationships around you, the important mm-hmm. things in life, family, relationships, and all this, and make it beautiful. Yeah. He just he realized, he realized, I think it was Pastor Samadhi I mean, that posted mm. a quote by somebody mm. that you just realize that in your midlife you'll be burned out. Mm. Mm. So burned out. So give, give focus to give have focus midlife to crisis. You said? I think people will not have a midlife crisis. Yeah. So give, give care about, I don't want to use what again, care about important things. That is how you know. Remember the okay. Let me tell you how we do it. This is how we do it. Let's 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 go. Let's go practically or is it theoretically? I'm I'm confused. But let's shall go this way. Remember (laughs) economics. How many of us like? If you are listening and you offered economics or you even studied economics, you know, you the gurus of economics. But we that just did it like in high school, you know, we just high school a little bit. Okay, secondary school. <laughs> so, remember yeah. that scale of preference they taught us in economics. Mm-hmm. Now, that's what we have to do. You write out everything you think you care about. And then you now start yeah. taking them out. You now rearrange them. You rearrange them based on what? Preference. Pa- like, I don't mean preference as per what you want, but what is needed, what is necessary. Really important. What yeah. is important. So, you arrange yeah. it based on that. And then... You start giving those folks to that. Like you give more, more. F- you care more. Let me even use the word. God forgive me. More. <laughs> <laughs> you care more. You care more about those things. It's not like you don't really care about all those things. But when you care a little about something, it really would not eat you as much as those things that you care more about. So you have to because if you decide to give everything equal, equal priority to yeah. uh, you. You will be is it stressed or burnout? out? What's the word? You can Mentally, even go crazy. Yeah, like it's, literally, you can go yeah, crazy. Thing before crazy is a whole lot of things. So like that's why you have to prioritize things, you know. And mm-hmm. I, I cannot overemphasize, guys. Please, if you've not listened to the last episode, kindly do listen to that episode because I feel like you no know, matter who you are or what you are. One of the things you have to prioritize is health. Yeah, yeah. And we don't just say physical. We said physical, mental, spiritual, psychological, whatever. Mm-hmm. Health. Because mm-hmm. it is important. At the end of the day, yeah. it is the backbone of whatever it is you want to do. Because yeah. remember the death and living. So you have to mm-hmm. live. And one of the ways to live is actually prioritizing those things, like your health. So, yeah. so write out your 
your things that are in your life that you care about yeah, scale them okay. and yes i feel like La- seriously like deep time. let's think deeply let's look deep this is like a place where we actually need to think about these I, things i saw a journal a book journal, okay you know, you're right i mean he has a column for what you are grateful for but yes I you know i, I wanted that. to start that thing but mm. I, I i feel like each time because for for a while now i've not been i don't know they don't know but you know i'm mm. not practicing and mm. so each time i do a lot of other things aside practicing but i've been so focused mm. on the practice area that it's actually stressing me out like it's stressing me out so much that when i even got to that point where of you at the end of each day find something you are grateful of you know yeah. are grateful for and i i want to i really want to write but i just think about it again and i and that's why i'm saying that sometimes we 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 are so bothered about what we have not gotten that we forget what so these days what i do is when i don't even have one thing i want to say i just i just say i'm grateful for life and then from that point i remember maybe people i meet maybe people i just meet things that just clicked very little thing i just clicked that day i'm like i'm grateful for this maybe i shot a video that i've been wanting to shoot for a while i'm like oh i did something and it worked out you know sewing can be stressful you try some manipulations and it just work out and i'm like i'm grateful for this so i've realized that it's not about that big thing you know celebrating small wins it's not about that big thing i feel like it's actually big it's about the things that i've been able to achieve and so i'm grateful yeah. for those things so the assignment is look within write out everything you feel like you care about as of now then scale them up preferentially yeah. give priority to things that you feel like you should give priorities to and then watch yeah. it for the period of i'm not going to say you should watch it for a week or two weeks but make efforts to actually prioritize those things as you have listed them mm. like make effort genuine okay. effort things that you listed like less try as much as possible not to care about them if you are someone that is big on social media and all of those things and trolls have been getting to you and all of those things i would like to advise you and actually to what's all those words that they used to use when you are ah oh grammar say ah oh what are those grammarians when you need them okay so just be just be grateful if it's just one person out of 100 people that that trolled you like one, only one person said something nice to you please focus on that one person as long as you are self-aware and you know within yourself that whatever it is that you put out is actually a good thing don't care about anybody that remember life experiences matter and it might be from their own so people like to project and that's what internet trolls do is a projection mm-hmm. of that so if it's going good for you they just want to project whatever it is that is going wrong for them so i'm also mm-hmm. advising trolls please be kind all this savagery or whatever it is that is called you are not being unkind to people it's not everything that you have to well, savage it's not everything in life that we savage sometimes that's let, why let's, to get to let's just be kind it's yeah, seriously and, it's hard or let's let's be realistic yeah. it's hard to be to to get out of your life when everybody like when it seems like everybody's out there to get you like it that's seems the, like that's the point of this book you don't get i know i know you don't want to care but still on still you reading the book alone does not yeah. make you not care all of a sudden so it's that's what i'm saying that is a growth, growth. Uh-huh. so <laughs> try as much as possible to dwell on it even Allah, if we if you actually have to um criticize you know this book it was going to look yeah. somehow that's what i'm saying that as much as you are grateful for that one person that had a positive comment also look within what i posted is it actually does it uphold my values yeah. and everything if it does we are not talking about so um, i feel like it's a great book from my hand yeah. it's actually a great so, book we didn't talk like we didn't discuss half of what the content of this book is yeah but i could i can more, say we at least summarized to like a reasonable extent so yeah, i would advise yeah. that yeah, yeah. if you have like if you have the time or anything walk into a bookstore get a copy 
get a copy of it and it's not a book that you will read yeah. once and sit if, evil because if, even if, me okay if our readers have noticed last month it was alchemy yeah this month it was such a lot of like in the fuck so there's a series here guys we are going to be we are going to be having once in a month a book, book discussion so it's like i think we, when we say it's a story of growth and learning we read so we want to bring it to you we want to yes. Yes. yes these are the things that effort do you know, imagine there are a lot of mindset shift you can have from just reading this book true and true. a couple of other books so this this is this is part of growing and don't growing. you you, so you actually don't have to reading. accept everything you read you are, you, you should what also know that no, it, so, starts, it starts from picking your book right mm. kind of kind of no, you know when you don't you know this thing about i don't know you rather have this adage or something but let me just say sometimes you get sense from nonsense so mm. even when you read books that you feel like or you've had maybe bad reviews you might read it and it it speaks to you differently from whatever yeah. reviews that you've gotten so sometimes it's even about maybe you pick the perfect book or not so a yeah, book that looks imperfect mean, can actually be very good for you. So you, of course, you could, you will in that light abuse to your mind with yes. your thoughts and some of the things. In that light, then, I also think when the topic, hold on, when the topic stays with you, at least you find find some reasonable conclusion to say yeah, and something yeah, to stand on. That's true. All right, so I'm there to say that. In that light, we would also like recommendations from our audience and our listeners and our, our loved ones because you are, you're part of them. If you listen to this program, don't worry, you're part of them. So please, oh, any any book, any anyone you've any book you've read and you find that it's something that sh- would inspire others or help others to to grow yeah. and that we can yeah. learn from, please kindly share yeah. with us. Would try as much as possible to pick them up and then after reading would also bring it to this platform to this course and other people or as other listeners it can reach a wider audience so so i, I want to read i want to go into reading now okay for me i give an eight okay and eight yeah eight yeah it's correct why eight i know i feel like if we really go we can argue some of the things with the author and you know from his own experience he has said a lot and it, a lot of them you know the things he said are true and some other things might not be totally totally I, I don't think you should argue that with him because he already said you are wrong you are always so, so I don't feel like you <laughs> argue that no, you so whether like it that. is true or it's not true he already said he did that clever. so very we clever. <laughs> and I said like that guy, did. that counterintuitive is what he actually did all through that mm-hmm. book. Yeah. For me, ah, uh, I would also go with an eight. Yeah, I was looking yeah, at eight because yes, I'm keeping two, but because <laughs> I really, really liked the title of the book, it was it was catchy, and right, very you, catchy, like and then the fight. writer, oh no, it was so good. Like really nice yes, writing. So would you recommend it? I would recommend it, but I would also like yeah, to so say yeah, I would also like to say that it's a book about you not giving a fuck. Well, in the process of reading this book, number one, you would realize that that's why I said if you are even doing this skill of preference thing, I feel like you should pick a copy of this book and read because you would actually realize some of the things that you give a fuck about by just reading the book. Like it would just pop. While I was reading the book, I just started realizing that oh okay, oh okay. At some point, I felt attacked a lot in the book and I just wanted to drop the book. Down. Come on. So sometimes it's just good that you read it. It does not mean that it will change immediately because me, there are still some things that I am still doing. But it's a process, and some things I am I've learned. Some things I'm not. So that's so in the act of not giving a fuck, as the writer said, you will find yourself doing a lot of giving a fuck while reading the book. I will tell you that. From my own experience, for others it might not be because, again, life experiences, it might not speak to them in that way but it spoke to me in a way where i gave so many fuck while reading the book so it was a little okay. it could let, be a little let stressful them, let them hear their, 
experience. So that's and, why I'm keeping true. Because in a way, he attacked me and he, I'm keeping the two. The guys who are collected to my house. Come and collect the mini tree in my house. Anyway, okay. let's go on. <laughs> Okay, we are watching on YouTube. Oh, sorry, it's listening. Is this on YouTube? Oh, yeah. But they are watching one thing. They can be watching the audio ground. Look at you. They will not be looking at the video. They will be looking at the video. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, guys. Let's close. Podcast this week. Next week will be back. With another mm. interesting conversation. Of Only growth and, I... and learning. Exactly. So, guys, have a lovely week ahead of you. Yes. I'm very sorry once again for the um, is it breaking transmission? For not bra- Power, is it publishing or broadcasting? Okay, publishing rather. Well, I'm publishing these on Friday. It was unforeseen oh, circumstances <laughs> exactly <laughs> but really we're actually sorry because we give a fuck about you guys and we know you give a fuck about us a lot of people reached out to tell us that they actually missed the show yeah. I know that you put your mind say we are a lot of people I prophesy I'm speaking positivity into our life <laughs> you people <laughs> anyways have an amazing <laughs> week ahead enjoy the is it the last week of april no it's not the last week just exactly. enjoy april and before i forget i actually said i was going to give a shout out to my girl on her birthday but now it's passed because of the unforeseen circumstances for not <laughs> publishing this podcast but belated happy, happy birthday to you accuracy i love you love you love you so much if you don't know accuracy you can follow lorex shape What's that? The Andrew is so long. But Sorry. simply follow Chef Ajumi. That's a food line handle on Instagram. Chef Ajumi on Instagram. C H E F A J U M M Y. Chef Ajumi. She cooks. Mm. See, see, follow order. So follow and order. <laughs> mm. Just order because right, mm. guys, your body is to say something. You want to leave me here. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. We can together. You will go with me. <laughs> anyway, guys. Take care. Take care. We love you. See you guys. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.